Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Sam Chimrayev. Normally, I go on to say my really cool partner is not here. Sorry, she's great, etc. But uh, for the first time in years, we're sitting here together. To keep going. Um, <coughs> our office, how do we go? Wait. Sorry. Um, so, well, just like brief history, we are around for about eight years in Berlin, and we both used to work at Sana, sometimes with Florian. Side note, Florian's last lecture was way better than the Berlin one. Um, so thanks. Uh, and we, like Sana, make a lot of options, so we're not as, we're going to come back to this project, but just to sort of explain ourselves. <coughs> Um, quick, really small project, which is one of our favorites, on the top of Arnold Brandelhuber's building, who's a good friend of ours. This is like a little entrance way that he's got. We built a sauna. And the sauna is uh, basically the smallest piece of architecture that we could imagine. And it actually was a leftover vitrine that we never used because it was a bad idea on my part to have a vitrine. And then we had this vitrine lying around. And then basically what you end up with is kind of the most intimate space and the most open space at the same time. So there we are, the two of us with Arno. And as you use it, basically it fogs up and then it becomes like totally enclosed. So it's basically like just absolutely nothing and then it's completely closed. And it has no insulation, but because it's a meter 50 cubed, it gets really hot really fast without doing anything. But then again, it gets really cold, so you have to put the water all the time in case you care about the technical aspects. Yeah. So that's, that's our, like one of our favorites. And then another little thing, which is kind of an obsession of ours, and I think we show this because of what we're doing in our workshop here, is sort of furniture that's typologically tying program and people together. So this is the coffee coffee table, which is just a coffee table on which you make coffee. Like ex extremely straightforwardly <laughs> has a burner and you make coffee on it. And it's also a kitchen because it's got kitchen tiles. It's it's exactly, you know, it's the size of every coffee table, you know, classic coffee table. Or tea. Okay, so the next uh, project, uh, Julia Stoschek collection. And Julia Stoschek is an art collector uh, from Düsseldorf. I don't know if you, if you know her. Um, she has a big space in, in Düsseldorf, and as most people, at some point, she felt she needs to venture out to Berlin. You know, most art people uh, go there sooner or later. And um, she was looking for a space and found this, um, you know, this pavilion from GDR times. Um, you know, maybe from the size of the text, you can judge what kind of personality she is. She <laughs> it's really great, very strong. She was my idea to put it so big. Um, so she went uh, this space, which is very complicated because she was just allowed to be there for half a year, etc. And um, her collection is, which is important to know, her collection only consists of media art. Right? So the spaces have to be dark. Um, and she rented a um, fully glazed building. That was one issue to deal with, so the temporarity and also, you know, that the spaces have to make, um, to be dark. And the next issue, what was important for us in an art collection, I don't know if you've been to media art exhibitions, I think it's the worst thing. You go from a dark space to another dark space. You have no idea how long the movies go. You get really lost, right? So it was really important to give some kind of orientation to the space, but also to have some uh, light rooms or like bright rooms 
where you can also have some public program. And so all those things um, were answered with one element, the curtain, which is a wrapping from the outside with the facade to give a new kind of look to the outside, to darken the spaces, and then it wraps inside to create those potentially bright spaces. So the curtain always marks the threshold between dark and light, and so public spaces and spaces where the art is shown. So the lower, you know, it's the ground floor where you come in, the lobby where the curtain wraps in, and then on the upper space also the, you know, the middle space is carved out with the curtain where you can sit and, you know, have a look to the program and then decide to which of the spaces you go in. So this is an image of the lobby where the curtain wraps in. So you're, you know, you're coming in, but you're potentially still kind of on the outside. And then you go through those curtain cutouts to the um, spaces where the media art is shown. Um, another image, you know, looking to the outside, to the entrance. And so this was really like all we did there because, you know, it was really meant to be there for half a year. So potentially if she moves out, the curtain is removed and the space is left as it was before. This is an image of the upstairs space where we also put some furniture so people can sit down and said, have a coffee or look at the program, have a break uh, from the movies. Another uh, image from the upstairs space. And this is just a little curve out again out at the facade to sit down. And that's uh, where the art is shown. Another uh, nice effect we thought is you know, the curtain really made uh, no daylight coming in, so perfect condition for the art, but it wasn't making a really dark space because the curtain was white. So it was still a very light atmosphere, even though the spaces were um, dark. The basement. And then uh, the office spaces that, um, you know, received some identity just by putting furniture. And there, of course, there was more freedom to put um, colors, etc. Tables were most beautiful from down <laughs> below, <laughs> which you had to see. And that's the view from the night. So maybe now is the time to point out that there is no line in our lecture because we haven't given one together for a really long time. Even though we work together on a whole bunch of things, we also apparently do, I mean, obviously do like very different things. So I guess I don't have the patience that Johanna has in a certain sense to like deal with those bigger interiors. I can't, I don't know, or slash I don't have the clients. So I, my stuff is tending towards like very, very simple, almost one-liner kind of furniture. And sometimes that furniture becomes architecture. But basically, it's sort of like, what do people do there in a really old-timey program wins kind of way? So we got like this like super seemingly banal commission to build a facade on the back of Christian Dior in Miami. So. You know, and it's not the entrance to Christian Dior, although it does face Celine, which is a building being made by Johnston and Mark Lee. But our build, you know, it was given a commission that had no function at all. I think they thought we'd just like paint a big picture of somebody or like, you know, put like Nelson Mandela on there. I, I really don't know. But anyway, it was a, it's a pretty banal facade. But then we had this idea like Miami, I don't know if anybody's ever been there, but the cliches about Miami are all true. So like whatever you think from watching Miami Vice, like that's kind of there. Like there are people in flashy cars and big suits and fake tits and all that. And people really, really care about how they look. And then we found this photo, which is also like, it's fun to care about how you look. It's a kind of side point about that. And so we started with a really simple idea that we'll just make a place to do your makeup. And this is under construction now, so you have to just bear with me. It's just model, models and drawings. But that's the, you know, that's the facade we were given. And then this suddenly is becoming like just a place to engage. So it's like about the body. It's about reducing the facade to something, to something that becomes personal. 
right? And so you, you sit there and you do your makeup, and that's outside, right? And it's just light. It's a really like typological backstage, right? Because it's the back of Christian Dior. It's not a meaningful front. And so now it's just these lights, which you can buy pretty cheaply, um, and mirrors, and each one is like a little person. A lot of a lot of the things we're doing right now are about making little little people. And for some reason, we made the ashtray and the cigarette in model one to one. I don't get it, but it's nice that I came in the office one day and somebody got that into the model, because you could just take a cigarette and put it in there, of course. Okay, so next project is also, um, you know, for some reason, of course, if you do one project in the art world, you get the next one, etc. So we got really um, a little bit into that, um, this art world. And you might think, okay, art, you know, best clients, great, they must be really open. But at the end, I, I learned it's really, really hard. <laughs> especially, so ABC is an art fair in Berlin, right? And especially with fairs, because there's, it's actually just about selling. Right? And so most fairs always look the same for some reason. They all have their little booth, you know, sell because it's perfect for them to have their little space and sell the most art uh, possible. And so the thought is really how can you do it in a different way? Um, so to break it up, to really make a nice atmosphere. And um, so the idea was, you know, maybe relating a little bit to what Florian said before, to make also a kind of an open structure. So um, to make one element, the cross, that gives some kind of order to the space, but that has a variation inside in order to create really different, different flow of space. So um, basically it's more like an organized, like an exhibition. There are those crosses that have different lengths Right, from one meter to four meter. So the layout was given of the grid, but then the galleries and also the artists could choose um, what kind of space they want to buy, potentially. So for example, there was a choice to buy or rent uh, like a one meter cross corner or like a two or three or four. You could also buy like two corners facing each other or like a whole cross all around, or you could also, you know, the most expensive option was to rent a whole space like in red. And so it was really the grid was given and the choices were given, and then after the galleries answered, right, like what they want to have, there was, you know, the final layout was created basically by them. And what I um, really liked then at the end, so because they all were like little rooms, right, created by different galleries. So they also had to work together a little bit to kind of almost curate the different spaces together. And it wasn't so clear, okay, this is my booth, this is your booth, etc. And um, the spaces were really different, even though it was a very strong grid, you might think, okay, it becomes maybe boring, but because there are different um, sizes, sometimes the spaces felt very closed, like here, so, you know, four meter crosses, and you had like really small um, openings between them. Or like here, you know, one gallery rented a whole space and you know, gave it a space. And then where the crosses were really one meter, suddenly the space became really open and you know, small in between. And I think it's it's a little bit similar, you know, to the Stoche collection. Um, it's really trying. You have a very complex set of requirements and different people who want different things. Um, but trying to answer all those different needs and those different you know options with like one element that can be then adjusted by the user, or that they still have several choices. So another um, fair, again, I'm staying with the fairs, <laughs> which is a different kind of fair. It was in the ZKM in Karlsruhe. And uh, the fair was like called Code N, so it's more like a, they don't like the word fair. I think, you know, they don't like the word fair anymore. Um, but it's more like a festival of startup companies that could present themselves there in the ZKM. And I don't know if you know the, this building in Karlsruhe, so it's a really big um, industrial building with like five court, huge courtyards. And 
so the thought was okay normally if you're at a fair or a festival you know each one has like normally how they present they have a little table you know but they stand behind they have their stuff customers come okay they show them so there's always like a border between them right and the idea was like to not have this kind of border but rather because it's a festival to create a kind of a public space right? and what is a public space many things can happen at the same time and uh, for me, really, the image of a public space was this, you know, the Spanish there in Rome, for example, where people could sit and stand and talk and hang out, and you're not forced to do anything. It's not so clear what you're doing. And so the idea was to create in each of those courtyards, like one huge staircase where the uh, startup companies present themselves, where they're just sitting, and people could go up, could sit, have a coffee, and then play you're doing etc and then each stair was like they had like five different topics and each courtyard each stair was like dedicated to one um, specific topic and so you can see you know people sitting next to the startup companies etc another nice effect that you had really like good overview you were standing below and you could see immediately who was there and then, of course, there was a stage, which also um, was yeah, perfect for the stage. So, um, again, I've, I'm getting doing much smaller things, and one of them that we we did kind of together is, but but I kind of continue with it is a is a project. This is the title for a bed. <coughs> That you're about to see, but it's also kind of the title for a whole bunch of of notions about togetherness, right? Because, well, you'll see in a second. We made this bed that is is a giant triangle, and I don't, you know, I don't want to go too far about this, but the only other beds besides rectangles are round, and when you think of a round bed, one thinks of the now deceased Hugh Hefner, and Hugh Hefner sat in the middle of his bed, right? So if you just remember this bed, which is worth remembering, Hugh Hefner was sitting there, he had a telephone, he had a typewriter, he had like a, all kinds of light switches. I mean, basically he could like order a whiskey to his bed from somehow, right? And, and the thing about a Hugh Hefner bed and all round beds, which are really cool, I don't, I'm against them, but just to say like, you're going in that bed to fuck Hugh Hefner, right? Like, Hugh Hefner is the center point of that experience, right? There is no, there is no like, real multiplicity. Like, even if it's an orgy in, in a round bed with Hugh Hefner in the middle, it's, it, really, it's a Hugh Hefner world. And so, just, just to say, by making a shape that's not, that's not at all centric, right? So it's not an equal triangle. I'll just kind of go on. It's a, it's a really odd shape of, of triangle that, you know, in the photo you can kind of distort it to look like any size of triangle. It turns out I didn't include a plan, stupidly, but I will next time. But basically, basically there is no middle, right? There is no like appreciable center point. It, it looks in this photo like there might be, but in fact, like there is no one idea. So when we say nuclear family and its opposite together, you can also think about all kinds of arrangements of people wherein everybody gets to like claim their own space. The other thing which I should include in a plan, which is like a really, really nice afterthought, is like, you know, if you think about every bedroom plan that you've ever seen with a rectangular bed, you're left with like relatively small spaces around it, right? So like you're, you're and no matter what, if you put a queen size bed in a normal size room, it's the bedroom, but if you put this bed in any room, you end up back again with three good spaces. So the space, like, there's no side anymore. There's no, I mean, if you put that thing there, then there's a back, but you don't have to. And then there's no side to the room. So like, you end up kind of with four decent spaces, which is just something I learned by doing, not because we planned it, but it's, it's a nice outcome. Anyway, and then somebody, of course, made it. This is from Pinup, which I just like that he made it into something really sinister, but it's not sinister. Um, so, kind of relatedly, 
another thing which is an obsession. I mean, I've already showed you the one thing, and there's there's actually a lot of. I'm obsessed with redoing stoves. I don't know if you're aware of this, but stoves are really dominant design items, no matter what you do. So, like any kind of kitchen, the stove. <laughs> You know, in America, people are obsessed with having big, giant wolf stoves that cost six grand. And they really sort of, whatever you design around such a stove in America is dominated by the fact that you have a $6,000 stove, right? And so ours is also kind of expensive, admittedly, but, but, <laughs> but not, not six grand. And, and, it, and it, we're just suggesting with this thing that you can have like a, a much lighter engagement and have people around it and have it become a kind of piece to work to work on and to communicate with not altogether dissimilar from the coffee table so this is one of our many new stoves um, <coughs> this is a giant bathtub it's the smallest very big bathtub or the biggest very small bathtub depending on how you look at it um, I think that's the only photo I have of it this is our other bathtub, which we made for Brandel Hooper as a gift for his uh, child, Renee, when she was born. So we made this little bathtub because he needed a bath, because he never took baths before. And so suddenly he needed a bath for the baby. And that's the bath for the baby. And then I have to put this in here because I'm excited about it. But we started making chairs. And I'm not, I have really very little to say about it, other than that, they're, that they work really well. And I'm really proud of them. So the next, um, you know, typology missing like art gallery, and again, I don't know if you look at art galleries, most of them, I think, are very boring. They're all the same. At the end, they just want the white box, you know, the, the gray floor, um, flexible lighting, and nothing that actually engages with the art. You know, just give the space for the art. So this project, you know, Corporate Scanny Seidler Gallery in Berlin, is a try to. Um, break it up or to give it something else so to not make you know just drips and balls but to give them basically a structure like an open structure that divides the spaces so they want to have like several exhibition spaces the back spaces other spaces etc so it's just like an open structure that has some depth and so that can also be occupied in different ways and also to make connection between the spaces and so you know, the cover on each side is optional and can be also put away or you can make uh, holes in it or maybe trees, etc. So, for example, here is their showroom. The art can also be um, put on that structure in some way. Um, so this is, for example, when it's like done or finished as a perfect exhibition space from the other side. We have a view to the, to the office spaces. And so again, this is in their office, so of course it can be used as a shelf, etc. Or here are also the kitchen, so it contains all the general functions of the of the, the gallery. Or in the archive, and it's really full and uh, used for the art storage. And the kitchen, etc. So the idea was really, I mean. I have to say, like so far, it didn't happen. But I think it can really be because it also has some depth. They can also be vitrines to be put it out, or the technical that you need for the exhibition can be put there. And again, this idea to really think of to make it a difference in not only having the trips and balls, but that artists could also engage with it and break through the rooms and make a more open structure. I hope you don't get bored with the small things, because that was that's really good, you know, that that last thing. Um, so, one of the things that the kind of an idea that we have, that you know, people in our studio here this week, I think, hopefully, are kind of getting on on board with, is the idea to that like furniture has some kind of body relation, and are become as a result of having some kind of body relation, become characters. Right or in in by extension families, so you know in the way that somehow if you when you make like kitchens normally you end up with architecture, right? And so we had this notion. Well, 
for one thing, a lot of our clients and ourselves are moving all the time. At least when we were a little younger, we had like more, you know, our office had to move. We, our offices moved three or four times. You know, it's a Berlin has a changing real estate, etc. And so it's partly about flexibility, but then also giving things value, right? So it's, on the one hand, you can kind of move it. On the other hand, like each thing is really celebrated as a, as a quality in its own right, both, both as an object, but also as an experience and also as a thing to like judge yourself with. I, don't, I hope that, well, you, maybe you'll see what I mean. You know, it's, it starts out with just like a really simple, just like, okay, what do you need? You need a sink, you need a shelf, you need a toaster, right? And then if you kind of get, you have to imagine that it's a really expensive, nice toaster. But so then you like suddenly becomes an experience where you make, when you make toast, you kind of aware of like you're getting, in my case, like I'm getting a little fatter, maybe not so much butter. Like you, you kind of have an experience of, of each of those things. And it's kind of talking to you and you're in a dance with it. I don't know if you have, have this experience in a kind of too late in a nightclub when everybody's a little bit drunk and you're not really dancing with people and it's not really full and it's kind of the end but you're sort of aware of those people in that space in that discussion that's that's in theory how these little guys work we we made all that stuff except the oven we just bought of course but that's before we figured out this is like pre pre oh my god we should make stoves um That same thing applies to other logics. So we have never talked about this one, and this is the same client as Florian, except we didn't win. So that's like a, obviously a radical difference. So he's already kind of explained what <coughs> what's being asked. Although this year, he said, maybe next year. <laughs> um, but we show this because it has a lot to do with what uh, what we're doing here in Porto. and. A lot of people in our studio drew a scheme really, really close to this in the last 48 hours. So we should just sort of mention that we thought it through once. So they asked for like a shared living situation, right? And like in a warehouse, right? So that's the, 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 the space is given. And we took the Kanye West option, is what we called it in the office, which is to say one big bed a lot of closets, one big bathroom, one big kitchen, which is on the other side of that little low wall in the middle, one big table, one big living room, and then a little, one big study. And then, and so it was basically like just an extrusion. But it had, it, it you can't really, we didn't make a big story about it, and we didn't want to get you bogged down in the technical parts, but like there are little bits of the table that lift up, and little parts of the closet you can walk through, and cute little mini type details, but are not really the point. Um, and so, and then we said like, a la somebody, from one of our students yesterday, who just said like, yeah, and then you can divide it how you want, and then theoretically one day to the next you can make a change. You can do all kinds of different, you know, possible arrangements. And because they wanted pods for some reason, like they were obsessed with the kind of notion of pods, and not cool pods like Florian's pod, more like, they had like preconceived notions of little other sculptural whatnots, and we were like, "Well, that's weird. Why? Why would we do that?" So, and this fits a lot of people, um, and it works that you end up with like a room that has all the things you need, and you circulate in the living room corner, like sort of in the far away part of this drawing. And then we love this. Like this is our, my favorite drawing that we've ever made, which is just like how great it would be after it's a whole huge mess, and how everybody in together and you just trash the place, at, you know, as like the best hotel party of all time. So you hear, but it can, and here actually, when it's a mess, funnily, we realize when you draw a mess, you actually see the program better, right? Like it's actually more clear. Like, oh, that, yeah, right, exactly. Like I said, maybe next year. Okay, so this is uh, our biggest project at the moment uh, together, which seems kind of endless. I don't know, when did we start that? 
ages ago. <laughs> 2012. Like we can. It's like we were children. We're still children. But so yeah. Um, you know, and, and it's a building group. I'm sure today everybody knows what building groups are. I don't need to explain it anymore. But it's also self-initiated um, because you know we are there. Nobody calls, so we have to make a project uh, out of ourselves. And we knew a lot of our friends always looking for apartments. Like, do you know an apartment? And we're like. Sure. Um, so we were going to look for a site, which indeed in 2012 was still possible in Berlin. Um, we found a site, and um, which so this is under you know just to show it's under construction. <laughs> and now there's but concrete, this, just exactly. to say. So the the site, you know, I don't know if you know Berlin, but it's uh, what's interesting about the site. It's really in the middle. It's on the Kurbusstraße. Is the oldest red light district of Berlin. So children from Bahnhof Zoo, Christiane F. I don't know. You might be a little bit young for that, but this happened right on that street, and that's probably also, um, you know, the reason. So here you can see the side, and you know, the pink skirt there indicates what I'm talking about. So those are the women who are hanging out there, <clears throat> and then that might be the reason why we got the site at the time because no developer believed that they could, you know, sell apartments right there. So we, you know, brought together all our friends that we knew. We bought the site, which was a very, you know long process i'm really still wondering how we did that uh, 2012 and then um you know a lot of discussions building groups endless and so we started okay so this is the project so we made like a lot of options we took a long time to think about the design because we knew okay this is you know has to be good and of course if it's a building group it's different than any other apartment building because you have the chance you know people know each other from the beginning so um okay you think about shared spaces etc but it was important for us like in Berlin there are a lot of building group buildings and mostly what they have is like one big space on the ground floor which they share and the rest really comes down to the you know smallest common denominator this is always the thing about big groups you think you can make something great but at the end it's you know um, everybody has to be fine with it so it becomes not so interesting and so for us it was important that you not only um, that you also see that it's a different kind of building, right? so that the structure itself already shows what's happening inside. Um, another um, difficulty was, as I showed before, so it's a corner building, a typical infill in Berlin. You know, it has to be filled in the block structure. So we ended up with this kind of L-shaped building, which is potentially difficult because you have dark corners. It's north-south faced, which has another difficulties because the apartments, you know, all have to be, you know the same daylight etc um, and so we were thinking and making a lot of options for a long time and um, at the end we came up with um, this idea that there are actually like six towers who have very high ceilings like five meter high who are overlapping vertically and horizontally so it's it's a very simple structure again but it gives like a lot of possibilities for different kind of uh, flats. So this is a, you know, just a model picture at the moment. So here you can see a little bit how it works. So the six towers and you know the gray part is always like you look down and the white part is what you see there. So they're overlapping and you get apartments that first of all we think works very good because they're all facing different directions in some way. <coughs> Another thing that we were interested in to not make, you know, normal Berlin apartments have all the same rooms connected by a corridor. Right? And we were thinking, okay, how can we do, how can we create a kind of a privacy in a different way, in a more soft way there? And that works, first of all, by having those different shapes. So, for example, if you have an S shape or a T shape, if you imagine, you know, you're having those corners, one is sitting at one corner, another person at the other corner, so you're in the same space, but still somehow divided. Um, the second way is because of the different heights. Right? So you have those overlap spaces that are the different height than you know the S and T shape and the high spaces. So also there you can create some different kind of privacy just because you're on another level without having really walls. And so they're all open just all one big space, which we are very proud that we even convinced all the 25 people 
to do. Um, we made a kind of deal, to be honest, to say, okay, first move in, and then you can do the walls later if you want, after three months, but try it out first. <laughs> and so just go back to the plan. So here you can yeah, understand how the different apartments work. And if you go, if you look at the section, so again, it's a very simple structure, but each apartment is different because they all it's you know they all have different sizes some of them have for example only the high space or some of them have all four overlap spaces how we call them and therefore be much bigger or some say okay i just want to be in the ground floor i just take the overlaps on the bottom or you know on the top etc so it becomes at the end um, like a very complex building And then the idea of the overlap spaces, right, if you go back to the plan, sorry to switch so much, is of course where the shapes are overlapping, naturally you think symbolically already, okay, this is the space where people can meet. Again, we were not interested in making one big space where everybody could meet, but rather make those shared spaces individual, meaning that you, know, you could decide yourself with which of the four neighbors that you have you potentially want to share a space with. So you can say, hey, maybe we both we really like books, so let's share a library. We both make sense to share, to make a guest room there, or we just make a door between our apartments, or we don't make walls at all. So you really have each person has the possibility to say how much sharing with who I want to do, and you're not forced <coughs> into one scheme. So it's here. So, here, so we also have an apartment there, <coughs> living here. Lars uh, Müller, you know, just published uh, Florence book, which showed at the last page, but didn't say anything <laughs> about it. Uh, has the other apartment, which is a great neighbor, just because he's not, you know, in Berlin so much. Um, so, for example, here's the flat of Sam Hanna. This is his flat in gray, and this is the overlap between our both apartments. We decided to put a kitchen in that space, right, to be really like a basic function of the of the house. And so it could either be our kitchen <coughs> by like closing the sliding doors, or it could be his kitchen, or we could really make a space between ourselves and share and extend it to the mutual apartment. And so this, you know, happens in each apartment, each um, has potentially four overlaps. And of course, our dream would be or at least it's possible that it's just an open structure uh, that the house, whole house is open potentially. Oh, it's back to the top. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and so, yeah, it's under construction right now and we hope to finish it next year. Maybe just a quick a quick word about, about this Baugruppe thing that's really interesting because they also might watch this at, at various times, at, at various times, you know, we presented this thing, and it is, as you can tell, like a fairly complicated thing to understand. But in fact, again, to repeat what Johanna said, it's six overlapping towers, basta. It's six, it's six rectangles, offset and and put together, aligned with two streets, right? So it's, it looks like a lot of form, but it's just, it's a funny shape of street, and so it's aligned, and so. And so it took our clients a while to like form themselves and like for people to come around. And I think that everybody was intrigued enough to go with this party. So now it's under construction and like every thing, it's like a little over budget. It's got, you know, we're, we're fighting about all kinds of things, but like the party of it and the way the apartments are organized in relation to each other is so kind of strong that our group kind of accepts and loves it. So while the mullions are getting thicker than this model in every sense, and while, while the handrails are getting uglier, more than likely, and there's issues with the way the lobby works, and you know, there, there's kind of, it's all now detail things, and you, in a way, it can't get fucked. Um, I know that that sounds kind of cynical, but it's it's not, and it's the only people who are really screwed are us because, it's, of course, we made a complex thing and now we have to solve 25 different unique problems driven by 25 
different unique personalities. So that's, it's a lot of work, but I think you could never convince a single person to do this, like a developer or a, a state owned anything, because it's too, you know, it, in a way we got everybody quite fairly to like fix on their own identity of their own little space. So like each, you know, as Johanna said, each shape, but like that's suddenly a person and that person's fighting for the shape that they love that we kind of convince them about. And so, just to say, like the Baugruppa model, on the one hand, could be crappy, on the other hand, has this has this ability to form like really weird things because you could get people to agree on their own thing, which is counter the way almost all apartment buildings are thought about. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Thank you. <laughs>